Hi and welcome to our service today. It is lovely to have you with us. You are welcome if this is the first time you've been tuning in or whether you've been tuning in loads. It's really great to have you with us this morning as we read the Bible, as we worship, as we pray together. My name is Sophie. I'm the lead minister of New Street Church. We're here in Falmouth in Cornwall and uh, we're really excited to be thinking about how and when we might start meeting together and we'll let you know as soon as we can. If you have been joining in during lockdown and you're starting to feel well, kind of like you're part of this thing called New Street, we would love to hear from you. You can email us hello at newstreetchurch.org. Just tell us your name and where you've been watching from. We would love to explore with you a bit more about how we can connect you in with church. We've got a newsletter that goes out during the week. We've got a church membership um, and we would love to talk a bit more with you about that if you're ready to have that conversation. In a moment, I'm going to hand over to Matt and we're going to have some worship uh, a bit later on. We're going to have our reading from the Bible. We're going to be carrying on our sermon series with Peter and Jesus. Ben's going to be speaking to us and we've got a time for prayer. But just as we come, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's been a crazy time before we press play and watch this service. But if that's been you, let's just take a moment to pause. And just remember why we come. We come into the presence of God. Even though we're spread across many households, we come as one family, as one church. We come as we are with whatever else has been happening in our lives and whatever else has been going on in our hearts and wherever we are in our faith. We come. And maybe just lift, lift those thoughts, those longings, what's on your heart at the moment. Just lift those to the Lord in a moment of quiet. Lord, thank you that you do indeed welcome us. We thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to meet with you and to meet together. We pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will be working in each one of us and in our homes throughout the course of this service and into the week. And I just pray these, these words that we're going to sing in a minute. Lord, come, reveal your wonder now. Open our eyes to see. There's so much more. Stir a passion in our hearts, Lord. Amen. Let it overflow 
screens father ignite something within us Jesus a passion for your name passion for your lost passion for the community come on and stir yes stir stir us up Lord stir us up Lord Amen. Jesus, you are where it all begins. Your beauty calls us deeper in. Lord, we look to you. We look to your cross. We look to the wonder of your love and your grace and your mercy. And we give you thanks and praise. We know that our richest gain is found in you and in you alone. Amen. Did it 
such love and sorrow meets all thorns come so rich a crown were the whole realm of nature Far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my own. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul. The reading is Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 25. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. I wonder if you've ever done that thing when you see somebody from behind that you know really well in say a supermarket, you've gone up to them, tapped them on the shoulder and said hi Bob or hi Sue, then they turn around and it's not Bob, it's not Sue, it's somebody that you've never seen in your life. Well I must admit that I've done that once or twice, an embarrassing case of mistaken identity. And I've only ever walked away feeling foolish, putting my head down in the trolley, hoping I don't see them again on my way round. And whenever that's happened, nobody's ever said to me, get behind me, Satan. But that's what happens to Peter in our reading today. As we saw last week, Peter says what he thinks. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And today we've just seen that after he's declared that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God, and then he gets outraged, he gets distressed when Jesus tells his disciples that he, Jesus, is going to suffer, he's going to die, and he's going to rise again. Peter says this, Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus' response is hard, his words are harsh, but he's not saying that Peter is evil, but he doesn't want to be taken away from his mission, what God has sent him to do. Jesus is single-minded about following his Father's will, despite what it will cost him to be persecuted, to suffer, to die, and yet to be raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so with those words, he puts Peter in his place. But then he goes on to say something quite profound to the disciples, to his closest followers, a truth about what it means to follow him, to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus, he says this, he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And what he said to them then also applies to those of us here and now who choose to follow Jesus. We too are disciples of Jesus, the invitation that he makes to us. So what does it mean for me, for you, to deny myself, to deny yourself, to take up my cross, to take up your cross, and to follow Jesus? Well, one thing it doesn't mean is to bear something nobly. For example, if someone has an illness, then they may dismiss it 
by saying it's my cross to bear. No, Jesus here is being a lot more radical. He had a way of teaching that showed that to follow him was to turn the world upside down, that to follow him meant turn everything upside down that we took for normal. He says things like, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, that those who mourn or those who thirsty will be comforted, will be blessed. He says that the greatest is person is the most humble. And it's this backwards, upside down thinking that I think Peter really struggles to understand. It's why he gets it wrong so many times, because Jesus' way is not our way. And here we see some more back to front, upside down thinking. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And what Jesus is saying here is that to find true life we need to stop living life our own way. We must deny ourselves and follow his way, follow Jesus's way. His way, yes, it did lead to death, but that was followed by his resurrection, new life coming out of the old, the offer of life with the creator of the universe. He also says that we have to pick up our cross to follow him, that there's a price to be paid to be his disciple. Jesus never promised an easy life to those who followed him. And as we read the Gospels, the stories about him and his life, we see that there were some people who, even though they knew that he was the Son of God, they weren't prepared to give up living for themselves. And so they stopped following Jesus. For many of the first disciples and for people in the early church in the first few centuries after Jesus' birth, many of those people did lose their lives because they chose to follow him. Literally, they were killed for their faith. And sadly, even in the world today, there are people who are killed for being a Christian, people who are persecuted and who are marginalised in societies in certain countries because of their faith, because they have chosen to be disciples of Jesus. And it's probably true to say that most of us will probably never face violence as followers of Jesus, but there is a cost to us. There is a cost in the choices that we make, in the things that we do as de dedicated followers of Christ. It may mean not having, for example, the career that we dreamed of, or it may mean a difficult relationship with certain members of your family or your friends. So to follow Jesus is the hard way. So we have to ask the question, is it worth it? I mean, that's a good question to ask, isn't it? And if you are a Christian already, I'm sure that you have no regrets about following Jesus, that you know it's not the easy way. But I do hope for you, I do hope and pray that you know the joy and the peace and the love that comes from that new life of following Jesus. And if right now you would not say that you are a Christian, if you wouldn't say that you are a disciple of Jesus, then I would ask you to think about those words of Jesus. He says this, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. So I'd urge you to really think about what that might mean for you, to find out more about who Jesus is and what he might mean for you and your life. Now you can do that in lots of ways. Why don't you ask somebody that you know is a Christian, ask them what those words mean to them. And there's also still opportunities for you to join us on the Alpha course as we explore questions about who Jesus is and what it means uh, for us to follow him. So in all of this, Jesus is clear. He's not somebody who will tolerate a mistaken identity about who he is, his mission to bring life to the world. But he has that open invitation, an invitation to you, to me, to join him in that topsy-turvy, upside down life with him. That invitation is this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me 
will find it. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those words. That through you and in you we can find true life. And help us to know what that means for us, for today, tomorrow, and the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we consider Jesus' challenge of denying oneself and following him, given to his disciples then and to his disciples today, I'd like us to remember in our prayers the persecuted church around the world. Right now, 200 million people face persecution for their faith in Jesus, risk jobs, freedom, and even their lives to follow him. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are willing to come from heaven, a place of infinite beauty and peace, to earth where you would face rejection, suffering, and death, to bring us back into relationship with God the Father. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen by your spirit Christians persecuted for their faith and to encourage by reminding them that nothing can separate them from the love of God, that through their faith, courage and endurance their persecutors may be challenged and come to faith in you. We thank you too Lord for Christians who have heard your heart cry for the broken, the captive and the homeless, often putting their welfare before their own. So we pray for victims of human trafficking, for organisations like A21 and the Salvation Army that work to identify, recover, protect and provide the counselling needed for safe return to their families. May your light shine into the darkest corners and bring hope and freedom. We pray too for the ongoing work of societies like St Petrock working to eliminate homelessness in Cornwall. We ask for your wisdom and patience for the staff, helping to rebuild the broken lives that have resulted in a life lived on the streets. May they be able to inspire hope and dignity that will enable them to believe they can turn their lives around. There's lots to pray about locally as well. Lord, we pray for our town and our county, with all the changes and reopenings now going on as the tourist season begins to re-emerge. We want to ask you to endow us and our authorities with wisdom and vision. We pray for the considerations over the way the Huddle coffee shop can reopen, and we pray for Bianca and Anna working through that. We pray for our government Again, asking for wisdom and insight that wise decisions and edicts will bring peace and stability to our country. Lord, help us not to be forgetful of the recent challenges to our biases and prejudices. Keep them present in our minds and shape our thinking and our responses as we continue to pray for that worldwide upheaval that every life matters, that your love justice and fairness permeate the process. And then we want to pray for our church and all that's going on here in Falmouth. Lord, we pray for Sophie and Simon and their family as they continue to settle into the ministry at New Street and into the local area. We pray for the young people's work with Jane and Johnny and Charlotte. Help them in their creativity and in their imagination. And then there's the news that Bill has been asked to take on King Charles Church and we want to pray for him and Bren. Lord, bless them with wisdom and vision and with energy. Lord, we thank you for church and pray your presence in all that we do in your name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining with us today. That's quite a challenging talk that we've heard from Ben. And if there's anything you'd like to share with us or talk about any more, do get in touch. Hello at newstreetchurch.org. We've heard the challenge about following Jesus. And in a moment, we're going to close our service with a song where we respond saying, yes, Lord, would you send us 
This next song has some video footage from Falmouth where many of us at New Street live. And it's a real prayer, Lord, would you send us to this place to be your people? And as we sing it, we have in our minds the cost of doing so. So let's use this final song as a response to all that we've been hearing and thinking about during the service. This is our yes, Lord, would you send us? So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to hand back to the music group. And that's how we're going to finish our service today. We'll be back next week and we would love to see you then. Lord, thank you for our time together. Thank you for these words of challenge and we pray that through them we would hear your invitation to walk with you, to follow you and to know you in such a way that we are ready to count whatever that cost is. Lord, would you send us. Amen. I'm undone by your holiness in the light of your holiness I'm undone by your holiness send me Lord letting go of my selfishness I repent Letting go of my selfishness, send me, Lord. Where you go, I will go. I belong to you alone. Letting go of my selfishness, send me. Your perfect love make me bold In your perfect love no more fear In your perfect love send me Lord I will run as you raise me up full of faith As you raise me up I will run you raise me up, send me, Lord. Where you go, I will go. I belong to you alone. Letting go of my selfishness, send me, Lord. Sing it, oh. This is all right.